Welcome out to Denver Open Media, everybody. Give it up. Mm. An amazing crowd tonight here for Open Music Sessions, our once a month first Friday showcase of what we do here at Denver Open Media. My name is Daniel Reskin. I'm a local comedian and a member here who makes content. Check out my show called Datmocracy, though, a political comedy show. It's kind of like Bill Maher, but less assholey. Uh, we do a lot of great things here. We are, are uh, a production house. We are a school to teach you how to do better than just holding your camera in front of your face in the car, okay? We don't like those videos, and they're dangerous, all right? Drive your car. Don't film yourself in your car. We can teach you how to make high-quality, great, interesting, visually stimulating videos, all kinds of stuff here. We're also a community we have all kinds of events. We've got a hacking space on the side where they are currently making robots to fight each other, okay? I don't know how or if it's legal or what, but there's sparks and fire and it's pretty cool. Um, thank you for being here. We have quite a show for you tonight. Uh, we have a community spotlight. We have an amazing band tonight. We have Roca Hueca here, everybody. Give it up for them. They're going to be here tonight. This is not just, just me and my imaginary band right here tonight. We have so many microphones set up for such an amazing sound coming at you. Uh, we also have amazing comedians. We have the comedy from Elise Kearns, James Pate, and Megan DePonzo. So give it up for them. <laughs> Little comedy to wet your whistle. It's a great comedy town. I don't know if you know about that Denver. It's like New York, L.A. Denver's right there. Sponsorship. We must address this sponsorship. This is a community effort. Okay, first of all, give it up for all the, the staff, the camera people, and all the production assistants. All these people are donating their time and talent to make this happen. And then, of course, we got our, our fantastic sponsors. Perhaps you're full of them right now. The Sexy Pizza. They're fantastic. Westward. Always shouting out. Sex Pot Comedy. One of the best comedy uh, event people. We have Lamar's Donuts. Are they inside you as well? Uh, Crazy Mountain Brewing Company, which is fantastic. The Intrepid Sojourner Brewing Company. Harder to say when you get drunk. Comedy Works. The best place to see comedy in town. One of many radio stations. KGNU 88.5. We do that here. Oh, and our brand new sponsor, everybody. Give it up for Univision. Gigante. Very excited to have them on board, have you on board. We got a lot of fun stuff. Also, keep in mind we have a raffle going tonight. Uh, you can, that's right, he just clutched his wife's knee, I'm assuming, he just clawed through her jeans with excitement. Uh, you can win a membership to Denver Open Media tonight. You can take classes, you can be up here goofing around, taking pictures of yourself last month via a camera next month in the future. Think about it. Enter the raffle. And that's all the housekeeping. All right. Are you all ready to start the show? Yes. Fantastic. Well, before, before we laugh, before we gyrate our hips into a madness, uh, we're going we're gonna to think, we're going to learn, we're going to learn about our community, the community spotlight. And from the Denver Foundation, happy to bring up my friend Dele. Everybody get up for Dele. What's up, Dan? How you doing? Michelle, would you uh, like to join me up here? All right, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dale Johnson, coming to you from the Denver Foundation. Denver Foundation and Open Media Foundation uh, sparking uh, and, and budding uh, a new relationship to uh, help produce uh, storytelling for the foundation and for the purposes of the community spotlight here at Open Media Sessions. We're super thankful to be here and excited. I'm excited to have Michelle here with me uh, from the Chalk Gallery. That's a Chicano Humanities and Arts Council. Uh, so, Michelle, let's, let's jump into it. Let's do it. All right, cool. So what can you tell us about Chalk? Uh, what is your mission, uh, a little bit of your history, and some of uh, your, your values and visions as an organization? 
Well, we have been in existence since about 1978. We started as an organization of artists really interested in promoting Chicano and Latino art um, through the humanities, uh, specifically visual arts, but we all, our early founding members were poets, oh, wow. writers, storytellers, dancers, and we recently moved. That's awesome. All right, cool. Uh, so where has the move happened? Are you uh, in the neighborhood? Are you in the, in the, so in the local happy. area? Yes, we are. I'm so happy you asked that. We're at 222 Santa Fe Drive, just a couple blocks south. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, Chalk was uh, closer to 8th and Santa Fe until very recently. It's right around the corner. Right around the corner. And the early Chalk was actually um, in, started in West Denver, and um, I'm sure a lot of us know that West Denver has a long history in providing murals and Chicano artists, and Chalk was a way to bring all of those artists together and have a place to promote their art and display their art. Um, thinking back to 1978, it was a different period of time, so the artists that really started Chalk were groundbreakers. Yeah, that's awesome. And so we were talking before the show, uh, and you mentioned that some of the founders were able to come through to the new space. Can you uh, share a little bit about that experience? Yes, I would love to. Um, since I recently started with Chalk and May um, as the uh, in the education programming, I've been fortunate enough to meet some of the founders, and these discussions included, you know, the vision that they had um, bringing Chalk to Denver, and it's just been wonderful to hear those stories. Of, the struggle, um, having that place, having a, a dedicated place to their art was their main vision. Ah, uh, that's beautiful. So uh, I just want to improvise a little bit here, and because you sound like you're so passionate about Chalk as an organization, what is your favorite part about working for Chalk and, and being the education director? My favorite part is working with the people and just enjoying the art, getting to see everybody's different perspective and how they see community and how we can build community through the art. So I feel very fortunate to be a part of it. That's beautiful. And how did you get involved with Chalk? Um, I, I have to give the credit to my friend Stacy Beruma. She's not here right now. But shout out to Stacy, though, right? Shout out if, to you're, if you're watching, Stacy, shout out to you. She's actually a face painter, and one of the um, one of the main events that we are known for is the Dia de los Muertos. In fact, when I was a teenager, mm -hmm. that's how I was first introduced to Chalk was their Dia de los Muertos events, and Stacy is a face painter for those events, and she recommended me to apply for the job, so I really um, appreciate that. And again, it just points to the level of community and relationships that we have with each other as artists, as community members, and those that are interested in keeping our culture alive. That's great. Uh, and so where is the new location? What's the address, and uh, is there anything special happening soon? Uh, I heard that there are Maybe an opening celebration tonight, is that true? That is true, we'll be there till nine, possibly 10 if we can pack the house. Um, on my right, way let's pack here, it out folks, come yes, on. Yes, let's go. Um, on my way here we actually did pack the house and it was a, a fantastic opening. Um, it's, uh, our current exhibit is about 10 to 12 artists. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are newer artists, some of them are established artists, but that's a beautiful thing about Chalk as well, that we have that ability to reach out to many different artists. And we do have a third Thursday, or excuse me, third Friday event coming up also. Okay, that's great. Uh, and so if people want to show their support for the Chalk Gallery, uh, what, what exactly can they do? What is, what is your advice to anyone in the audience or watching at home to uh, support the work of Chalk? Come see us in our new space, 222 Santa Fe Drive. Um, consider joining as a member. Um, make, sure you make, don't, um, make sure you make an effort to see everything that, you know, from our education program, because that also has a long history. As I mentioned, the Dia de los Muertos is one of our signature events, but we have um, a lot of interested parties to strengthen our programming, so we're really excited about being in our new space, so please come out and enjoy it. We provide music and a small reception, so yes. That's awesome. Reception sounds like free food and drinks. It, it uh, is. Uh, if, if I know what reception means, I know that much. <laughs> All right, thank you, Michelle, for uh, joining you. me here today for the Community Spotlight. Check out uh, Chicano Humanities and Arts Council. It's a beautiful organization uh, educating folks on Chicano history. Chalkgallery.org. Chalkgallery.org. Check it out on the interwebs, folks. Thank you. All right, thank you.
give it up for that video, everybody. The beautiful artwork. I did see that that last one was Gandalf. I don't know if you knew it. Most of them were Jesus and Santana, but the last one was Gandalf the Grey. It was a good touch. Um, definitely check that out. So, ready to switch gears, everybody. Are you ready for the comedy portion of the evening? All right, that was a decent response. But here's the thing. Comedy is not... You've been great listeners so far, but now we're... We need energy. Comedians, if there's no back and forth, there's no feet. I know these cam... Ignore these cameras. They're not looking at you. Don't be self-conscious. Okay? It's all for the comedian. We're going to get close-ups of them so they can send the video off and get on the, the fancy comedy festival in Montreal. So if you don't laugh, they don't go. Okay? That's all I'm saying. Um, so are you ready for the comedy portion tonight? Yeah! Yeah! Okay, that's fantastic energy. We have three amazing Denver heavy hitters tonight. All of them run shows. All of them are great. Uh, and I'm really happy they're here to entertain us tonight. Uh, the first of which, uh, she has a show coming up uh, this month called Get Thee to a Nunnery. Uh, she's a local podcaster. Very hilarious. Everybody give it up for Elise Kearns. <laughs> Do you guys know anyone with like a floppy, flaccid handshake? Let's get this out of here. Nope, it's staying in. Do <laughs> uh, you guys know anyone? It's always someone named Larissa. She's like, hi, I'm Larissa. And I'm like, hi, I feel like I'm trying to jerk off the snout of that thing in the fifth element that Gary Oldman spits a cherry on. You know, it's a fifth element joke, you guys. <laughs> I love being here. I love doing stand-up comedy. I feel like maybe as kids, we want to follow in our parents' footsteps, and then we grow up, and we're like, oh, God, please, no, thank you. <laughs> um, and my dad is a stand-up comic, and when I was a kid, he went around the country as a road comic, and he did a lot of cocaine, and he drank a lot of alcohol, and he slept with all of the waitresses. <laughs> and I looked at that behavior, and I thought, this is the life for me. <laughs> this is what I want for myself. My dad really did do a lot of cocaine, you guys. My dad is the reason that I don't do cocaine. Because he already did it all. <laughs> there isn't any left. But he blames that lifestyle on stand-up comedy, so he didn't want me doing stand-up comedy. In fact, he did an interview with the Denver Post a few years ago, and they asked how he would feel if his daughter ever tried stand-up comedy, and he said, I'd rather she be a stripper. He said that in the Denver Post. I, like, I thought he was kidding. So when I won my first contest, I called him and I'm like, Dad, I won, I won a stand-up contest. I won $60. Ten of the comics, I won $60. And he's like, Elise, you could have made a hundred times that stripping. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys know you could be a disappointment to your father by not being a stripper? <laughs> yeah. I can feel some of you trying to figure out who I look like. Uh, the answer is Anna Nicole. <laughs> Somewhere between Anna Nicole, like, pretty sexy, and Anna Nicole, TV show Anna Nicole, sitting at home in her moo, like, shoving Frosties up her ass. <laughs> Remember that version of her? Remember? Remember? <laughs> Somewhere between, like, sipping a martini with olives and slurping a martini with, like, cut-up bits of reheated hot dog. <laughs> Somewhere on that spectrum. Somewhere between being a guest model and being someone who like has to do sexual things with an executive whose stuff probably looks like the snout of that thing in the fifth element that Gary Oldman spits a cherry on in order to be a guest model. I'm on that spectrum, you guys. <laughs> so I'm a lesbian. Surprise! Woo! I'm gonna try this again. I got it. <laughs> wow. There goes my tape. There goes my tape for Montreal. Um, I am a lesbian. I know it's hard to tell because I'm not wearing my coveralls and painting someone's deck right now. Are there any other lesbians here tonight? Woo! Oh, that's a lot. Hello. Hello. All right, well, straight women, then I'm talking to you. Straight women, listen up. Stop 
wearing flannels and backwards hats. Stop that. Stop it. That's so confusing for me. I have no idea who I'm allowed to sleep with, who I'm allowed to hit on. You guys already have so much stuff that we can't have, okay? You have your grandparents still loving you. Hmm. You get to pee sitting down, must be nice. I remember the days. One thing that kind of sucks about being a lesbian is that it's really hard to figure out how to have sex. Just kidding, it's not. It's actually 10 times easier. Whoa. I want to talk about the conspiracy set in place by the patriarchy to cover up all the famous lesbians throughout history. Okay, there's all these people that the patriarchy will have you believe were straight, but they actually were not. Like Eleanor Roosevelt. Everybody knows that, right? Yes. Everybody knows Eleanor Roosevelt was a lesbian. She was also active president while her cousin husband was dying. <laughs> so that actually makes her a man because only men can be president. No, boo. Uh, let's see, Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> Getting in the same fights with the same people over decades. Typical lesbian behavior. That's Alexandra. <laughs> Lewis and Clark drive around the country in their U-Haul, establishing trade with native tribes along the way. Cousin, exploring, hiking, lesbians. Those are some lesbians. Dracula. Dracula, Dracula, you guys, Dracula was a lesbian. As if a man would ever put his mouth on a woman while she's bleeding. Oh. I want to do one more thing because uh, I want to, and this has been fun. Um, I have this new joke. Everyone says it's the best joke I've ever had. <laughs> I want to try it. So um, it has to. Everyone has to start out singing the thong song. So, girls, scandalous, jealous, hip hop, hop, and the crew, the crew, the connect the dots, and just. She was Lim La Vida Loca. She had dumps like a truck, truck, truck. God, if everyone has to sing it or the joke doesn't work. It's, I'm, you'll see why, but everyone has to be singing it. Dumps like a truck, truck, truck. Guys like what, what, what? Baby, move your butt, butt, butt. I think it's sing it again louder. Dumps like a truck, truck, truck. Guys like what, what, what? All night long, let me see that thong. Mm. I didn't get enough participation, so I can't do the joke. That's it for me! But you guys, we all sang the thong song together. Wasn't that fun? That was like the most gratifying thing I could have ever imagined. That was a really beautiful moment. All right, I'm Elise, you guys. Thanks so much. Have a good night. You can stick around. All right. Elise Kearns, everybody. Leaving us on a mystery. You'll have to go see her live show to, to sing Cisco's long song again and perhaps unlock the magical treasured punchline to that joke. Uh, welcome back. Thank you for coming back. We, we did want to chat for a while. She needed to go just like wipe the majesty of the stage off right quick. It was such a good set. I needed to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for educating us on... on lesbians throughout history and and the greater musical interests. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> so what else you got going on? Um, so I run a showcase at Ophelia's. It's going to be the second Wednesday of every month, but this month it is on the third Wednesday, so the 15th. It's called Get Thee to a Nunnery, because Ophelia's was originally a brothel when it was built. Really? And Hamlet, in Hamlet, tells Ophelia, Get Thee to a Nunnery. And nunnery back then meant brothel. Who knew? Really? Well, yeah. What? Yeah, so that's our show name. That's salacious. Yep, I run it with Jody Champion. It is salacious. Jeez. Well, check that out. And uh, you have a podcast as well? I have a podcast called Elise's Locos Tacos. It's based on my favorite Taco Bell menu item, the Doritos Locos Taco. And we it's talk good. about all the things, dance, mental health awareness, LGBTQ, comedy, pretty much whatever I want to talk about. Everything you'd assume with tacos that comes yeah. in there. <laughs> that was well, awesome. Wrap up. All right. Any anywhere we can follow you, stalk you online. Uh, my Instagram is Elise Alfred Kearns, all one word, Elise Alfred Kearns, 
And I have a website, just elisekearns.com. All right. Thanks so much, Elise. Thanks, Daniel. Give it up. I'll take that. All right. You all have been a wonderful audience, and I think you've earned a second comedian. Are you ready for another comedian? Yeah. Whoa, I, you know, I shouldn't have asked that. You wasted your applause on the last, and that was just two people right there. You ready for the next comic? <laughs> okay. That's fine. Woos are acceptable instead of claps. I understand your hands are tired. Uh, our next comedian. Uh, he is a wonderful, thoughtful comic. He has a podcast himself about mental health and sex called Losing It. Everybody, give it up for the very funny James Pate. Oh, hello. Thank you so much for having me. It's so nice. I love, I love all of you. I love being here. I love all this stuff. I love doing comedy, y'all. I love doing comedy. I love the things that people say most of the time when they come up to me after a show. I had a girl come up to me after a show uh, recently, and she was like, hey, you're really funny. I was like, hey, thank you. And she's like, hey, has anybody ever told you that you remind them of Chris Pratt? And I was like, no. <laughs> Absolutely not, but thank you for saying that. Like, come on, Zero Dark Thirty, Jurassic World, Guardians of the Galaxy, that guy's like, oh, thank you. And uh, she was like, no, 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 none of those movies. Did you ever see the first season of Parks and Rec? Uh, <laughs> oh, I'll take it, I'll take it. Most of the time I get Chucky from the Rugrats or Arnold from the Magic School Bus, so it's cool. I'll give you a pass this time. Uh, I, uh... Let's see. I, it's gonna get weird. There's a place in New York where the Italians live and they call it Little Italy. And then there's a place in New York where all the Catholics live, excuse me, there's a place in Italy where all the Catholics live and they call it Diddle Italy. Uh, <laughs> they call it the Vatican, that's my bad, but y'all knew that. Uh, sorry, let me try that again. There's a, there's a place in New York uh, where all the Chinese people live, and they call it Chinatown. And then there's a place in China where all the Tibetan people live. They still call it China. They're pretty uptight about that kind of thing, as it turns out. Really uptight. Some geopolitical humor? Just filling you out. That's fine. I like that joke because people hear Italian and Chinese, and they're like, oh my god, is he going to do something racist? <laughs> no, here's the racist one. Uh, when I grew up in New Mexico... <laughs> I, I learned to sit cross-legged. I learned that uh, it was called sitting Indian style. That's the one. I, I know some of you went to school in progressive, progressive Boulder, and you learned the crisscross applesauce. That's fine, but I learned the racist one. And, but I, I, I also learned that if you stood up during story time and you walked across the circle and kicked some kid in the face uh, and took their seat, that was called sitting white man style. So it's, you know, growing up in New Mexico, it's public education. Uh, <laughs> it's real weird. I... Uh, <laughs> Oh my gosh. My friends asked me, uh, one of my friends asked me the other day, uh, he's like, James, if all your friends jumped off a bridge, would you jump off a bridge too? Uh, yeah, 100%. All my friends just died. That sounds super sad. Uh, I'm not suicidal or anything, but all of my friends just died, you monster. I'm 30, that's too old to make new friends. I can't be, come on. No, <laughs> too much. Uh, oh my gosh. I, uh, uh, anybody, uh, anybody dating out there? Anybody on a first date out there? Anybody in a in a in a, in a relationship? No, all single. Good for you. Uh, anybody in a, a a committed relationship? Not because either party really knows how to put together a committed relationship properly, but because neither party really knows how to put together a one night stand <laughs> properly. And the sex has been good, and one of you is awesome at making waffles, and you know, just throw a little whiskey in the mix. Call it commitment. That's how your parents did it. Uh, <laughs> I had, a, I had a girlfriend, I dated a girl for a while, she was a doctor, if you can believe that, take that with a grain of salt, she was dating me, I, I, uh, but she, she studied uh, neurochemistry, the chemical changes that take place in your brain, and she told me that I would be a good dad because of how well I handled my drugs. <laughs> I, had to, I had to ask her to dumb that down for me, why would she say such a thing? She told me that uh, it doesn't matter if you're a guy or a girl, when your brain figures out that you're gonna become a parent for the first time, uh, it, it, you know, it, it starts producing more of a neurochemical known as dopamine. 
uh, which we all know and love. That means like when you smoke a joint or drink a glass of wine or ride a horse shooting a shotgun off with each hand, that's all dopamine saying, this kicks ass, let's keep going. Uh, uh, that means when you see a new parent and they're just covered in like every bodily fluid and they've just got this dopey smile on their face and they're going, this is the greatest thing you can do with your life. It's because they're high. <laughs> They have a chemical imbalance, and there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I, I dabble, you know, I dabble. I, I was dabbling at a music festival recently, wondering where the line might be. How, many, how much dabbling is too much dabbling? I, uh, I, uh, I was taking a lot of drugs at the same time. And, uh, and then the, the, uh, the example walked past me in that moment. This guy, it was a music festival, so he had his basketball shorts on and his shirt off and his visor hat flipped upside down and his hands up in front of his face just going and I was like, oh my god, I don't want to do that many drugs. That's a lot of drugs. Uh, take it back a little. But uh, I thought about what my girlfriend had said and you know, it occurred to me that if you just put a baby in that guy's hands, like, he's just being a good dad, y'all. <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, kids are, I, 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 uh, I, kids, kids are crazy. I, Kids are crazy. I know kids are crazy because I was a kid. I, and d d I had to carry around a, a, a sack of flour when I was in middle school because we didn't get MTV at my house and they needed to prove that we shouldn't be a teen parent, right? But at that point, it is just a sack of flour. It's not a baby. And I guess that's kind of the point. But still, I, it's just ingredients for a cake. It's not even a whole cake yet. You know, it's hard to care. But I, I, I think they should wait until you're older. They should wait until you're in college. And they should give you a bottle of wine to care for for like 90 days. <laughs> it's got a lot in common with a baby, you know? Just like hold it by the body, not by the neck. Don't be uncouth. And uh, if you've got time, let them breathe. Uh, all right, that's going to do it for me. Thank you so much. You guys have been awesome. Give it up for Daniel Ruskin, Denver Open Media. Thank you so much. Stay there, James. James Payne, everybody. Chat with us for a second. Okay. I never take the mic out of the stand. That's not my thing anymore. What's up? It's like I'm you're done. really It's like you're really opening yourself. Now I'm gonna yeah. like try to chill out. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you've definitely got some. I'm not sure if it's father issues or child issues. Sure. <laughs> Success. First one, then the other, my friend. <laughs> and, and these are things you talk about. Uh, you have a show. You have a podcast on the Sex Pot Comedy. I do. I Network. run a uh, I run a podcast, as you mentioned at the top there, called Losing It. Uh, it's the Sex and Sanity podcast, and it's about the first time you went to therapy or the first time you had sex, and then we kind of just go from there. Sometimes at the same time. I haven't gotten one of those yet. If you're lucky. Yeah. 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 If you're out there, hit me up. <laughs> Need a whole new therapist after that. But yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, Boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Where, Indeed. You, you, did you say where to find it and everything? I didn't. Thanks for the reminder. This is a guy, a killer host. Uh, you can find it over on sexpotcomedy.com, of course. Uh, again, losing it, Sex and Sanity podcast. It's under the podcast section. Check it out. And where can we follow you? You can follow me on the 15 bus and the <laughs> Twitter and the Instagram at D James Pate. The letter D James Pate. The D is silent, y'all. D James Pate. DJ yeah. Ames Pate. DJ Ames Pate. <laughs> All James right. Pate. Nice. Cool. Awesome. Thank you very much, James. Thank you so much. I will Thank see you. Much. James Pate. That's why you don't take it out. You can't put it back in. That's right. It's okay. Can of worms. All right. You have earned, with your lovely audienceness, our final comedian of the night. And what a comedian she is. Uh, she hosts a variety of events downtown, trivia, bingo, comedy shows. And she is the, the mastermind behind the, the comedy website where you can find all the comedy in Colorado, 5280 comedy. She is Denver comedy. Everybody give it up for Megan DePonso. <laughs> Keep it going for Daniel, everybody. And the other comedians you've seen, that's awesome. I know what you're thinking. Three lesbian comedians in a row, oh my God. Wow, no, I wish, I wish. I played rugby for the free beer, mom, okay? Oh boy. 
I, uh, I love the energy in this room. It's great. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm a little tired. I, uh, I worked a double today. Um, but both those guys are really nice, so. <laughs> Just like so in love. They didn't even need me. I didn't understand. Sometimes in the morning I wake up and I'm like, hey world, what kind of adventures can we go on? What can we eat? What we can we taste? What can we see? And then my bank account calms me immediately down and we settle on bottomless mimosas. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> Solid. I mean, I'm resourceful. I grew up very poor. Anyone else grow up poor? Woo. Yeah, growing up poor. It makes you like better at just doing, doing stuff, like getting things done. Like I remember growing up really poor because I remember going to these really bad schools I remember in like eighth grade health class, this kid Terry just raises his hand and he's like, so are the condoms dishwasher safe or? And I was just so mad that kid had a dishwasher. That was not fair. It's not okay. I, uh, I grew up poor, but I, I am having a really good day. Guys, I have a comma in my bank account for the first time ever in my life. Yes, it's amazing. So I went down to one of the fancy uh, grocery stores. I went to go get some healthy groceries. And I walked up to the grocery store with automatic doors. Um, doors didn't open for me. That's fine. You don't always win at life. That's totally cool. Except the dude behind me came up and he was like, ha, those doors didn't open for you because you have reddish hair and that means you have no soul. I was like, calm down, dude. And I just turned around. I was like, actually, I don't even exist. You're the only one that can see me right now. Welcome to Shutter Island, bitch. <laughs> And then I just followed him around the store playing out other Leonardo DiCaprio movies. <laughs> There's room for me on that door, Rose! <laughs> Started walking down the produce aisle. He was like picking up grapes. I'm like, what are you, Gilbert? Yeah, I didn't see that one either. <laughs> just saying, if you're going to get a restraining order, have fun with it, right? <laughs> it's a good time. I was, uh, I was at a brewery here in Denver recently because every building other than this is a brewery. <laughs> Next time you guys go to the hospital, try the ICU IPA. It's delicious. <laughs> Locally harvested yeast. It's wonderful. And I was at the brewery, and I got, a, I got a, a flight, so I was taking my flight of beer-like shots, as I do. And I turn over, and there's this couple uh, sitting right there, and they were like, it sounded like they were arguing at first, but then I realized they were on a Tinder date because they were rapid-firing questions back and forth to each other, like an interrogation. Just so hot, right? <laughs> And the girl asked the guy uh, where he lost his virginity. And he's like, in a car. And she got all upset. And he's like, why? Where did you lose your virginity? And she's like, in a bed like a lady. <laughs> the thing is, I lost my virginity in a ditch behind a church. So I don't know, like, the lady scale. <laughs> but I think losing your virginity in a car just as normal as losing your virginity in a bed, right? It's like a rolling hotel for teenagers. <laughs> losing your virginity in a race car, though, super awesome. Losing your virginity in a race car bed? Real weird. <laughs> You'll be explaining Lightning McQueen sheets to men you love for the rest of your life. <laughs> that joke is so real. <laughs> I have the same comforter as my four-year-old nephew. Okay, I, uh, I, I was, um, I think I was at that brewery. I was cheating on my diet. I'm on one of these newfangled diets. Um, you guys ever lose weight just to bond with your mother? No. Uh, <laughs> Then we got into a fight recently. I've been on this diet. We got into a fight. And then this whole, and like I'm trying to talk to her, and this whole like being a be bigger person, be the bigger person, is really messing with my diet. It's not working out. <laughs> I was on one of those newfangled diets where all I'm allowed to eat is strictly whiskey. So far, I've lost like three whole days <laughs> and my debit card. So if anyone could. I, uh, I think my diet's kind of counterintuitive because I think everybody loves eating food when they're drunk, right? Eating food drunk is the best. Except I found the worst food to eat drunk, sushi. Because sushi's like the worst food to throw up, right? Because it's so expensive. And it comes up cooked. It's like you're on the homemade ceviche. All right, that was gross. Oh, man. Speaking of gross, I'm a Buffalo Bills fan. Hear me out. Any other football fans in here? Probably not. Yeah, that's cool. Hell yeah. I, here, so I, I follow a lot of football. I was born in Buffalo, New York. I've suffered tragedy. We'll, we'll cover over that. But I, uh, I remember last year, my favorite thing that happened in football. Any Detroit Lion fans in here? No, because why would there be? There's enough losers. I'm a Bills fan. <laughs> There's enough. Like, my favorite thing that happened is the Detroit Lions, they got a brand new stadium. Uh, they named it Little Caesars Arena after Little Caesars Pizza. And they won. And they gave every attending fan a free Little Caesars Pizza, making it the least used food stamp day in Detroit history. <laughs> Guys, I'm from Buffalo, New York. All I have to make fun of is Detroit, okay? <laughs> 
Here's what I don't understand about football on Thanksgiving. Why did the Dallas Cowboys and the Detroit Lions play? That makes no sense. It's Thanksgiving. It should be the Patriots playing the Redskins. And when they win, they steal their stadium, right? That's American history. That's how that works. I'm gonna finish up with this one real quick. I, uh, I like sex a lot. You guys should try it. It's neat, it's cool. Uh, try it on out. The thing I don't like about sex is like how everybody goes about to get it now these days, like dating apps. Like every time a new dating app comes out, I feel like Netflix missed out on the best dating app of all time. You guys know when you've been, you've been watching and knocks on your door like, hello, you still there? Yeah, I'm still watching Netflix! Okay, instead it could pop up with a nice little screen that's like, here's 13 other singles that just spent the last 10 hours watching Pokemon as well. Go outside and meet them. Or like pickup lines. Can we be done with pickup lines? Let's not get sex with pickup lines. They're just bad jokes. This guy came up to me in a bar and he was like, how do you like your eggs in the morning? I was like, unfertilized! <laughs> and banging their head against my biological clock. Thank you guys. I'm a Megan DePonso. Keep it going, keep it going. Keep it going for Megan DePonso. Oh, it's weird to stay up here after a set. Yeah, so this is a different, yeah. It's a whole different approach. Usually we just dive into the shadows. Yeah, I run away, I scurry normally. Yeah, I, we like to mix it up here. I mean, we usually ask, like, you know, the crowd enjoyed you, obviously. We never ask. How'd you enjoy that? I loved every single one of you. I made eye contact with all of you. It was beautiful. We can well make out done. after this. This is gonna be great. Good job, crowd. You got a high score, <laughs> Megan DePonzo. So you're doing 8,000 things in the comedy scene. So much all the time. I do run a couple awesome things. I do a uh, Uncorked, which is a, com a comedy show for all palettes at Infinity Monkey Theorem the first Wednesday of the month. It's always a free show. Check that out. I also run a, show, a traveling house party comedy show called uh, Shantytown, and you can find all the special addresses and dates for that at Shantytown Party on either Instagram or Twitter. And then also you can follow me at Megan is a joke on any platform. So check well, look, it on out. There you are. Lower there third. it is. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. And thank you, Daniel. Give up no for Daniel, problem. everybody. Megan DePonso. Ah, oh, bring it in. Fantastic. All right. And be sure there's a tip jar going around. Uh, this is the only chance they have to eat. So if you have a buck or two, Throw it for the comics. There's also some for the musicians later. Uh, and, oh, I get a lower third, too. Nice. Check me out. Very official, in case you didn't know. We got a quick PSA, and then we are going to reset. All of these incredible instruments and microphones are going to be filled with incredible musicians when we return. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Cool. Thanks so much, you guys. I'm at a party, so I can tell you I tell you, your dancers look great out there dancing. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Give it up. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us, and we are here. The main event, the main course of tonight. We are so happy to have them here. They are a Latin ska band from... Colorado, right here, homegrown, and they were, they were created in, in the most organic way possible, Craigslist. <laughs> Everybody, we're so happy to have them here. Give it up for Roca Hueca. <laughs>
me encuentro aquí Esperando a que hoy sea diferente y poder sonreír Barreras extremistas son las que me quieren acabar Yo solo quiero que mi voz a mundo se pueda escuchar Un saludo a toda la raza 
que le chingamos carnales Nos levantamos tempranito para sacar la papa Yo otra vez no tengo más que ir a trabajar Sin ninguna inspiración que me haga avanzar Cansado de matarme por unos centavos Mientras los empresarios millonarios están Mal pagado, bien chingado y apresado People sitting down? Hey, hey it's What's all your right. excuse? Hey, it's all right. Down. It's all right huh? if you guys sit down. It's all right. Just as long as you chair dance. Exactly. Yes. You the just next gotta one is a cover from a band called Sonora Santanera. Yes. And we sí. love cumbia. Sí. And this is called Luchadores. Sí. <laughs> Los cuatro rudos y no de la visión. La arena estaba de bote en bote, la gente loca de la emoción. En el río luchaban los cuatro rudos y no de la visión. El santo el cadenario, el budemo y el burdo. El santo el cadenario, el budemo y el burdo. Y la gente comenzaba a gritar. Enardecida sin cesar Métele la Wilson, métele la Nelson La quiero toda la que tira a tu sol Quita del candado, pícale los ojos Jala el del pelo, sácalo del ring Métele la Wilson, métele la Nelson La quiero toda la que tira a tu sol Quita del candado, pícale los ojos Jala el pelo, sácalo del ring Y la gente con 
comenzabas a gritar Se sentía enardecida sin cesar Métele la Wilson, métele la Nelson La quebradora y el tirabuzón Quítate el candado, pícale los ojos Jálalo del pelo y sácalo del ring Métele la Wilson, métele la Nelson La quebradora y el tirabuzón Quítate el candado, pícale los ojos Jálalo del pelo y sácalo del ring a mi familia en El Salvador, a mi prima Tatiana, San Salvador y Cuapa. ¿Qué onda? Yeah. Ok, esto se llama Te Voy a Olvidar and then we have Giselle with us singing. ¿Está listo, Mario? El mundo entero te puse a tus pies Todos los viernes 
una rosa y un clave. Cuando te fuiste no pude ni pensar. Mejor me acabo este tequila. Sentimiento roca fue que esta noche carnales. Yo te voy a 
it for Giselle, everyone. We're actually recording a new album and Giselle is with us in this album. You want to keep dancing? Should we stop right here? Esto se llama Red Ties and I hope we have more energy to keep dancing. That's for everyone right here. How's everyone doing tonight? Whoa, we're sweaty, right? You want to take a break, like a 20-minute break? I think we can't. So, let's call the next song. You can see the video on YouTube. It's called Skank It. O como dicen en español, escanquealo.
Ana ya llegó, estoy listo ya para bailar en las venas Tengo el ska, my suspenders get away My creepers just ain't give forget See you run on the dance, focus on this cocky No, no, no Rápido ya la banda comienza a tocar canciones y escalera los de panteón y de jefe Energy is racing up, I see you sitting at the bar Why don't you finish that your drink? Come on, let's go, let's come with me Vamos a pulir el piso, mueve el cuerpo sin prejuicio La chava Rudy se están todos listos para bailar y con sabor, sabor es que Ya lo escucho, ya seguí, ya lo escucho frente a mí Saliendo de la Rime Street, come on, let's go and stay with me La chava Rudy se están todos listos para bailar y con sabor, sabor es que Ya lo escucho, ya seguí, ya lo escucho frente a mí Saliendo de la anime, si come on, let's go, let's go with me Estamos aquí, Roca Hueca. Two more songs. Two more songs to go. And are you guys tired? That was a good workout. Yo veo mucha gente que ya se sentó. What's going on? I think you're tired, right? Are you tired? All right. This is called Exploit. Señores, on the guitar, Mario Rodriguez. On the bass, el señor Rico Rutia. On the drum, señores, Mr. Bonda. Y en los metales, on the trombone, Hansen Millicent. On the saxophone, 
el señor Pato Blanco Squids. On the trumpet, Mr. Matt Belcala. Y un servidor, Andy González. Se les quiere y se les quiere un chingo. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Quiero bailar, quiero reír, quiero la música poder sentir. Quiero bailar, quiero gozar, quiero la vida poder disfrutar. Quiero reír, quiero bailar, quiero la música poder gozar. Quiero reír, quiero bailar, quiero brincar. González, pa' adelante, cabrones. Este lugar está a punto de reventar. La música se escucha, los speakers explotar. Ya te quiero. Ay, ay, ay. Prepara ya tu voz. I wanna see everyone singing with me. Da 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 da. Everyone. Da 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 da
da da da da da da da da da da da da da da Thank you so much. Sam, man, can we do an otra? How are we doing on time? Adam. Cool? One more? What do you want to hear? One more. Okay. But I, I want everyone, everyone, all the way to the back. Is someone sitting down? If someone is sitting down, we're not playing. If someone is sitting down, we're not playing. Si alguien está sentado, no tocamos. Así es que vengase todos para acá. Everyone, come to the front with us. Okay? Are you ready? This is a, this is a good song. Mario wrote it. Uh, it's an energetic song. Are you ready for some polka ska? This is called Nena. ¿Dónde estás mi corazón? Cuando te fuiste tú me diste Eres tú Donde todos nos levantamos Pa' adelante Are you ready? Un, dos, tres, go Nena de mi amor No me dejes por favor Porque sin ti yo no puedo Necesito tu calor Necesito de tu beso Necesito de tu amor Necesito esas caricias Que me elevan hacia el sol Necesito tu calor, necesito de tu beso, necesito de tu amor Necesito esas caricias que me elevan hacia el sol Nena de mi amor, no te vayas por favor Mi mundo es muy diferente desde que perdí tu amor Me hace falta tus caricias, me hace falta tu amor Me hace falta esos besos con los que me das tu amor Hueca. Boogie down, boogie down, boogie down.
chiquitita Pero tu corazón se va a quedar conmigo chingado Puedo, necesito tu calor, necesito de tus besos, necesito de tu amor, necesito esas caricias que me redan hacia el sol. De nada de mi amor, no te vayas por favor. Mi mundo es muy diferente desde que perdí tu amor. Me hace falta tus caricias, me hace falta tu amor. Me hace falta esos besos con los que me das tu amor. Que sin ti yo no puedo, necesito tu calor Necesito de tu beso, necesito de tu amor Necesito esas caricias que me elevan hacia el sol Ven a ver mi amor, no wow. te vayas por favor Mi mundo es muy diferente desde que perdí tu amor Me hace falta tus caricias, me hace falta tu amor Me hace falta esos besos con los que me das tu amor Come on, come on, come on, come on Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Denver. Thank you, Colorado. Thank you, El Salvador. Thank you, Mexico. Yeah. Yeah, All yeah. around. Keep it up. Keep it going. Keep it going. Barroca Hueca. Keep it going. Keep it going. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. Here, talk. No, they can. Adam. Adam. We need Adam. a mic right here. Adam. 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 Hello. Bring it, Adam. There it is. All right. That was incredible. And an encore. Give it up for the encore. Otra, uno más. That was incredible. So. Yeah, you can talk. You can give, you can give shout outs. Come on, Blake. This is an opportunity hiding, to step out. Shout outs. All you, you know, yeah. step out from behind the instrument yeah, yeah. I want to give some and really give your voice yeah. out. I want to give some so shout outs. So tell us, tell I, us. I, yeah. I want to give some shout outs to whatever teachers are on strike. I want to give some shout outs to Black Lives Matter. I want to give some shout outs to transgender people. I want to give some shout outs to working class liberation. I want to give some shout outs to my family in El Salvador. That's all the shout outs I have tonight. Yeah. <laughs> does any, anyone else want to pretend Everyone like else? That you just like, won an award? Still? Still? Mario? Good. Mama Nino. Chihuahua! Chihuahua! Abuelo, cabrón. I can't, I can't tap. Hey, uh, big ups to the Denver music scene. Thank you all for being here with us tonight. A lot of familiar faces. Thank you guys for the support. Thanks for being out here. Thanks for supporting Roca Hueca. Mocochetes, Don Chicharron, Dendry, Tiscali, La Nena, Vic and the Narwhal. What? Do you want it? No. Do you have time to? She, t she told me we have a song. We can just talk. Oh, okay. I think we have time for one more song. Yeah! Or, or we can talk. Or we can talk. We can hear about each one of their philosophies and hear about. I heard they had some amateur poetry they want. <laughs> hey, hey. The only philosophy, the only philosophy is that the celebration is the revolution. Tip. All your dance moves, take them out into the world and share all of these good vibes with everybody you see out there. That's what this next song is going to be dedicated to and to this guy right here. Yeah, because I love you, man. It's like...
impossible to talk to the crowd if they can't hear me out there. I know. Let's do one more song. This is a powerful song. And it's called Hace el Tope. We're all gonna scream. All right, you ready? Real loud.
We did it. This time, nothing at all. Rock awake, everybody. Rock awake up. Incredible. Real quick, any any insight into what we just heard? Any the process? What any any behind the music? Anything? To uh, here, just take this one. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I just want to say first of all, thank you for having us tonight. Uh, Rokaweka has been working together for four years. Uh, we, we're gonna continue doing it, man. And our message is about unity, about peace, about love. Amen. And uh, where can we find you? Any projects coming up? Some stuff? Where can we follow? Okay, of course, Facebook, Rokaweka, Instagram. Uh, we are on Twitter. We are on uh, YouTube channel. Uh, and then we're recording our next album which is coming up soon, soon. Uh, I hope probably by the end of the year. Uh, if not, next year we'll be here. Uh, it's gonna be our second album, and it's gonna be awesome, man. Where can we find the first album? Uh, okay, you can go to a uh, band, uh, well, actually iTunes. You can go to CD Baby, and you can just purchase the, uh, the CD. It's called Red Ties. Awesome. All right, well, thanks one more time. Roca Wake, everybody! Roca Weka. Everyone is all hyped up from dancing. All their, all their feet are tired. They're rubbing down their toesies from all the dancing. We just got a, a little raffle to do before we go home tonight. So we could bring up Denver Open Media's very own Leslie. Hey, Leslie. Give me a hug, handshake combo. There we go. <laughs> so how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. How about you? Awesome. I'm just jazzed up, ready to give away some prizes. What do we got tonight? So we've got two things going for us. We've got the um, two, Emit 2 Pass from Comedy Works. This gets two people into um, some shows, not all of them, but a lot of co the Comedy Works shows either in downtown or like further south. So for the first ticket, if you'd like to do the honors. And all right. Now you do the first one. I like to do the last one. I've got Ross Scherer. Ross Scherer, anybody going once, going twice, and no. Sorry, Ross, you should have stuck around. All right, so this is going to be our next draw for this. This is Rashad Seismore. Sizemore? Rashad? Is there Rashad here? Are you here? Or a, or a representative of Rashad? No? Well, going once, going twice, three times. Sorry, Rashad, you should have stuck around. All right, so next one. Alex, oh God, um, Pardo, Pardo? Redes, Pardes, 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 Alex. Man, we had, a lot of, we had a lot of lucky people who left. It's just the handwriting is terrible. I know I look like a gringo, but I'd be able to read it if I could they could write it. Yeah, see, good luck, right? Alex Pardo? Pardo. He left anyway with his silly handwriting. Thank you, though. I appreciate you trying to assist, like, us flailing crackers of you. Uh, okay. All right, so we're going to do one more for this. Uh, Megan DePon. That's our comedian, Megan DePonzo. She won. Congratulations for sticking around. You get to go see... A comedy show, imagine that. It's not like you're stuck at them six nights a week. All right, and now membership? Yes, so this is for our basic membership and free class. We have a variety of memberships at Denver Open Media. The basic membership entitles you to using our editing suites, getting discounts on classes, and just being a general part of the DOM community, so it's pretty rad. Um, Communityness, all right, may I pick this one? This is where I like to pick. And I like to pick the first one because this person always wins. Not tonight. This person always loses, and they're going to win. Because that's, that's the scales of justice. And this is going to Jeremy Peicher. Is Jeremy Peicher here? Jeremy Peicher. He did it. 
Congratulations, you're a winner today. Oh, what a hero. You did it. Thank you so much, Leslie. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Have a good night. And just want to thank our sponsors real quick before we leave. We are happy to have the Westward Sexy Pizza. Everyone's chatting. I hope it's, it's going to be a nice effect on the microphone. Sexpotcomedy.com. We've got Lamar's Donuts, Crazy Mountain Brewing Company, Intrepid Sojourner Brewing Company, Comedy Works, KGNU 88.1. Five and Univision. Give it up for the cast and crew, everybody on the cameras and the sounds. This guy, give it up for this guy right here, taking pictures of you. All right, keep mingling. We had a great time tonight. Thanks for being here. My name's Daniel Reskin. Leslie. Have a good night, y'all. Thank you. Have a great night. <laughs>